Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. I have a very big box here and I wanted to actually show you the outer box, but it's just too large to try and get it on my camera set up here. So I've removed the initial box out of the exterior Visconti box. And I have to say that the exterior box is the largest box from Visconti I have ever had. So this is the box that this pen comes in. So first of all, I have to be very careful here because I've got the pen inside it. But you will see it says Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina. And it comes on this beautiful stand. And the whole thing rotates. So let me get that back on the desk and you'll see it there. It just spins and spins. And then there's a little door tassel here. So let's open up this box. So this is not a conventional box as you can see here. If I lift the lid up, you will see a pen. And this for me is a really special pen. And I'd like to thank Michael at Manuscript Pen Company in the UK for helping me secure this pen. Uh, this is a beautiful pen. And yes, this is not on loan. This is my own purchase pen and it is in my daily carry. And I ordered this around, uh, I think it was probably March, April time and it arrived eventually around May time during the coronavirus lockdown in 2020. But this is a beautiful pen. So <laughs> I wanna show you here you have this sort of wheel contraption here. You have a Visconti ID card, and this shows the Machina Leonardo da Vinci in an ivory resin, and it's a limited edition one of 288. And this is 112, and it does have the new Visconti in-house 18 karat gold nib there. So this is a really, nice pen it also comes with a bottle of ink which i have here visconti ink and that just sits inside the box there and then you have this beautiful sort of wooden sort of cog wheel and this really just accentuates the pen so you can put this in here if you want to and just twist the pen around so this really is probably one of the more usable boxes I have seen from Visconti. I, I do like a lot of their boxes. I do have a lot of their larger boxes, but this is a mammoth box in itself. So I think let's take the pen out and I'll show you it here. So this is the Leonardo da Vinci and it's the Machina. So this is a really stunning pen from Visconti. I am really glad that they made this pen. It's made out of the same sort of acra silk brown material that they used on the original Medici. And I love that material a lot. I think it's got some really great depth and some really great chatoyance going on there. And you can just see there that that is a really beautiful material. Now, this is a scrimshaw pen, so this has a lot of hieroglyphs here. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more so you can see that here. So these are the hieroglyphs on the pen, and you can see the scrimshaw engraved into that pen. Let's go and zoom in a little bit more so you can get that. So you could just see how fine some of this scrimshaw work really is on that pen. It really is quite mesmerizing. And you can see there the cogwheel. Uh, it's just a beautiful scrimshaw pen. And I absolutely love it. 
So for me, this is a beautiful pen and I am so glad I was able to add this to my collection. So in terms of the pen, what are we looking at here? So you do not have the standard Visconti clip. You have a very different sort of cog wheel clip going on here. The my pen finial there is the old style Visconti logo, but you can see, look at the detail here on that clip. That is absolutely amazing. And they've actually followed that through also to here on the edge of that finial. So you could see that cog there. And then also around the Leonardo da Vinci sort of nameplate here on the pen on those cat bands. So this really is an interesting pen. You do have the word Visconti here, and it then says Machina, because this is the Visconti Machina. Now, the pen itself is actually not that weighty. It's actually quite a nice weight, and I'll show you in a little bit. But the cap actually bulges out towards the center part here of the cap and then tapers back down to what is this band here. And this band is not on the cap, it's on the body. And then you have the scrimshaw body which tapers out to a, another gold plated trimmed band here. And again, you see that detail there going on. And then you have the filling knob. Now, this is a power back filler. Now, my only issue with this pen, and I think it's a little bit of a shame, is it's not a double reservoir. But honestly, I think if it was a double reservoir, I think that you wouldn't have seen this lovely gold band here. And if I remove the cap, quarter of a turn, it's got the hook safe lock mechanism, and then you have, again, another section here in the Visconti Acrosilk material. And again, that is really beautiful. It's got a lot of depth and chatoyance. And then you have the nib here. Now, this is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And I will wipe that off a little bit. Hopefully, you can see that in a little bit more detail here. So this is the newer in-house Visconti 18 cat gold nibs and this is a medium nib. Although honestly, it writes more like a fine nib to me. It has an ABS plastic feed there and then you have a V for Visconti on it. But I like how this writes. Now in terms of in the size of my hand, I find that this is a really, really good size. I can post the cap if I want to, but I honestly don't. I, I do find because of this clip, it's very back weighted. So I'm not a cap poster myself. So honestly, I would not post that at all. But for me, this is a really great size. This is a really great weight. And I absolutely love the new 18 karat gold nib that I have on this pen. And I love it has a hook safe lock mechanism because I am a fan of the hook safe lock mechanism and it is just a stunning pen. So I'm just so glad that I was able to add this to my collection. Uh, I didn't actually buy anything at the London Pen Show in March in 2020. Uh, actually, uh, I did actually buy something. I, I bought a dip pen, <laughs> a glass dip pen, uh, a bleak holder, I should say, um, and a name tag, but that was all that I purchased. So I had kind of saved my money up to buy this Visconti Machina. Now, this isn't obviously for everybody. This is a very elaborate scrimshaw pen, and it is a very expensive pen at that as well. So I do know that this isn't for everybody, but this really does go well in the collection of pens that I have. 
uh, more specifically the collection that I have of Visconti pens. So I am really glad that I was able to add this pen to my collection. So I think with that, let's do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison, and then we'll do a writing sample. So let's do a size check. The length of the pen, we are looking at 148 millimeters in length. The length of the cap is 62 millimeters in length. So that's quite a long pen. And if I look at the length of the body, including the nib, we are looking at 133 millimeters in length. So this is a really good size pen. I think with that, let's go and do a weight check. So the full weight of the pen, we are looking at just under 52 and a half grams. The weight of the cap, we are looking at just over 23 and a half grams. And then the weight of the body, we are looking at just over, just under 29 grams. So 28.8 grams or 80 grams. So for me, this is a beautiful pen and I just love this hook safe lock mechanism here. I love I, that I have this concave section. Although the section is a little bit on the shorter side, um, if I let me compare this to a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, and you'll be able to see those here. So these are pretty much identical in terms of size there. Maybe the machina is just maybe a couple of millimeters yeah, probably a couple millimeters longer, but I find that these are really nice size pens, and I do love the Homo sapiens. I do love the London Fog, and I love how it fits in the size of my hand, and I love that it's got a hook safe lock, and I like that I can also post it if I really wanted to. So for me, this pretty much emulates a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, but the only difference with this is that it doesn't have a double reservoir. So it does hold less ink. A double reservoir Visconti tends to hold around two and a, about two to two and a half milliliters of ink, and a regular uh, single reservoir is around about one to one and a half milliliters of ink. Still, that's a lot of ink, and I don't run out of ink that quickly in this pen. And I have to say that I have had this pen inked up since May every single week, uh, and I have been doodling with it, I've been writing with it. Um, I haven't included it in some of my currently inks, but I have included it in others. But this is just a beautiful pen, uh, I, I absolutely love. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Opera Master River Thames, a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust, a Visconti Belgica, a Visconti Ecstasy d'Oud, we have a Visconti Daedalus, we have the Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina, we have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, we have a Visconti... Last Templar Jacques de Molay, we have a Visconti Camelot, and then we have a Visconti Saint Basil. So let's go and do a writing sample. So this is the Visconti Machina. And this is one of the newer medium 18 gold in-house nibs that we have here from Visconti and I have to say that I do like this now the nib itself 
isn't as flexible as the older 23 cap palladium nibs. Uh, I will say that out of the bat right now. But I do find that the very tip of the tines has a little bit more flex to it. So it does allow for a little bit more sort of uh, flourishing and um, sort of flexing. So this is uh, inked up today with Akamon. And it's S-B-R-E Brown. Now, in terms of line variation, the one thing I do find is that this is a medium nib. And I have four of these newer 18 karat gold nibs now. Now, these medium nibs write more like a Western fine. Whereas the 23 karat palladium nibs, the majority of them actually wrote more like a Western broad. So you do have to be a little bit careful when choosing your nib size now because it has changed a lot. Now, I can push this nib and get a little bit more flex out of it. But I wouldn't push it much more than that. So you can get some more line variation out of it. And I'm not getting any hard starts or skips there. And you can see that before, I, I when I finished these lines and then I started these lines, I'd actually left uncapped for quite a period of time. So there's no hard starts, there's no skips. So this nib actually writes really, really well. I think in terms of wetness, let's have a look at this. And then we'll do wetness here on a horizontal pass. So this is a fairly wet nib. Um, it's not a fire hose. So, so this is not like the Visconti's, a lot of the Visconti's I have in my collection, uh, the 23 cap palladium nibs, whereas <laughs> I can actually have the ink smear going all the way up to here. And this is an A4 page. So for me, this is not super fire hose wet, but it's also not a dry nib. And I actually do like how it writes, but it does write, in my mind, very different than the 23 cap palladium nibs. And I think I'd have to check, but I think I have about 40 of those in my collection, 30 or 40. I know I have a lot of those. Some of those, though, they used to be consistency issues with the palladium nibs where some were very bouncy and some were very stiff and rigid like a nail. Um, I have noticed the same with some of the 18 cat in-house gold nibs from Visconti as well. I only have four of those now. Uh, my Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon that I had uh, just after I received just after this pen, that actually wrote very um, it wrote very hard like a nail, and the tines were very tight. And I did have to actually modify the nib to actually or tune the nib, I should say, to. Uh, make it write a little bit more wetter to my liking. So are there consistency issues with nibs? Yes, there is. But honestly, you're going to find that with any brand. If you take a look at Pelican, for instance, if you look at their M800s versus their M1000 nibs, if you even take one M1000 medium nib, it might write like an extra fine. And then I had another M1000 medium nib that wrote like a triple or quadruple broad. So you are going to get it and uh, it's just an unfortunate sort of way of life with pens uh, and I know a lot of people harp on about consistency with nibs and quality uh, it's not just Visconti it's not just Bok uh, these are actually in-house made nibs now so they're not actually made by Bok they're made by Visconti on these newer 18 karat and 14 karat gold nibs on the newer models so what do I like about the pen and what do I not like about the pen? Well, simply, I love this pen. Uh, it's been inked up ever since I, I bought the pen. And I've been wanting to do a review <laughs> for about six months. And I, I keep putting off the review because I, I honestly don't think I'm going to do the pen justice. Because this is a magnificent pen. And I absolutely love it. And I've actually looked online on Visconti's website a few times just to see what new pens are coming out and I keep stumbling across this machina and I keep thinking I wish I could get a second one because I like it that much these are expensive pens and 
a lot of people can't afford these pens, and I get that. But if you can, um, or if, like me, you sold a bunch of pens and a bunch of other electronics uh, to help pay for this, then why not? So if you like this pen, then certainly go and, and check it out. And for me, this pen writes flawlessly for me. I love how it writes. I love how it feels in my hand. I love the hook safe lock mechanism. It's only a quarter of a turn. I like that it's a power vac filler. The only things I guess I dislike is that it doesn't have a double reservoir, but I understand the reason why, because you're then not going to have an ink window, or if you did have an ink window, it's not going to look very nice or, um, aesthetically compared to the rest of the flow of the pen. I also wasn't that keen on this clip to start with, but honestly, it doesn't bother me now. Uh, I've got so used to this clip. I don't use clips anyway, uh, but for me, I don't know, like, even if you look at that clip there, that clip is a work of art with all those cogwheels. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful pen. So that's my unboxing and review of the Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina with the new 18 cat gold in-house Visconti nib. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.